everyone. Hey, in this video, I want to talk about Altair Inspire Form. Inspire Form is a metal stamping simulation tool that lets you test your sheet metal stamping designs for thinning, tearing, formability, all of that before cutting steel and creating a die. And in this video, I'll show you how to set up a multi stage stamping simulation with some added springback. To start, I just want to show you the Inspire Form interface. You can see that the form tools are built into the Altair Inspire GUI. So you get that same ease of use with Inspire form that Altair Inspire is known for. Now you'll see two menus up in the ribbon that are specific to Altair Inspire form that you won't see in the typical Altair Inspire interface. There's the feasibility menu, that's for setting up things like formability and blank nesting simulations. And then the tryout menu, and that's basically what it says. It's a tryout simulation tool. So for today, I'm showing the multi-stage stamping. I'm going to stay in the tryout menu and the first thing I want to do is I need to identify which part of this assembly is the blank. So I'm going to click on the blank icon in the ribbon, highlight my blank and then click assign. Now you can see a little pop-up menu that comes up and it lets me change the values for the thickness and material. I'm going to change it to 0.9 millimeters and when I click this icon next to the material field, it's going to open up the library and go through and find which material I'm looking for. Okay, so next I need to identify my plane of symmetry. On the constraints icon, you see this little red rectangle around it. I'll click on that, and then I'll choose the plane uh, for symmetry. Okay, great, so now I need to set up my single action draw. I'm staying in the tryout ribbon. Click the add operation, and then there's a single action draw icon. And you can see it adds the single action draw in the operation section of our ribbon as well. So one thing I love about Inspire Form is that it has some built-in automation tools. For the single action draw, if you hover over the icon and you click on the lightning bolt, it allows me to auto-configure the draw. I want to identify the build tools as well, so I check that box and then click that triangle to execute. Now you can see over here on the side, it's actually identified the die parts and the binder as well. Okay, so I do want to check a few of the measurements as well. Uh, mainly, I want to check to make sure my gap uh, is maintained correctly. So if I double click on the binder, and in the micro dialog menu, I can change this icon to uh, gap, and then I can see what it's set at. I'm great with these settings, so I'm just going to leave it. Now, I know most applications don't require pins. Just in case you do need it, I'm going to show you how to create them. So by clicking on the single action icon in the add tool, and from there, find the pin icon. Now that I have the pin icon in my ribbon, once I click on that, you'll see there's a few things I need to do. The first thing is attach tool. So highlight that, click on the binder, and then you can hit assign. Now from here, you can choose the location of where you're going to put your pin. You can see from the micro dialog menus, you can change the values of those. I'm going to make this one uh, 21 millimeters. And then just for safe measure, I'm going to throw a few more pins on here just for this example. Okay, so now that my pins are set up, I'm going to do a trim operation. And so what I'll do is I'll come up to the operation section again, click on add operation, but this time I'm looking for the trim icon. And then you can see again, it adds this trim icon next to the single draw action. And just like the single action, I can automate this process. I'm looking for that lightning bolt symbol and I'm just hitting auto configure. Okay, now the cool thing, once this is done, you can see that it's created a trim line. Over here on the left hand side, you can see the trim and the pierce uh, locations. Okay, the last thing I need to do before I actually run the simulation is just to add a spring back. It's really simple. Just like with the others, I'm coming up to the operation section of the ribbon. I'm hitting add operation and I'm adding the spring back there. That's it, now it's added. One cool little feature before I hit run, if I come back to the single draw, I can actually check and create a small animation just to see how the path is gonna happen before I actually hit run on the analysis. When I hover over the icon this time, instead of the lightning bolt, I'm looking for those three horizontal lines. Click that, that's preview button, then you can see the animation. Okay, we're ready to run. So come over here and run the analysis. The menus pop up to give you the options for the run, and then you're good to go. And okay, now that it's done running, you can see that Inspire Form makes it really easy to visualize the results of your simulation. You have all the different options as far as the output results, but visualization is really easy. 
you can isolate certain parts of it to make it a little bit easier to visualize. Really cool, really easy to use. So hopefully this gave you a good idea of what InspireForm can do. If you have any other questions, if you want to reach out to us, it's trueinsight.io.